Welcome to the Multifamily Customer Portal Tutorial Series. This tutorial focuses on how to apply for funding. For additional resources and guidance on using the portal, visit our website at www.mnhousing.gov. In this tutorial, we will describe how to get started in the portal, and then we'll shift to a portal demonstration where we will walk through how to find open funding rounds, use the apply for funding wizard to request project team access and how to return to an existing project after you've created it. Sponsors or a representative working on behalf of a sponsor such as a processing agent must apply for funding using Minnesota Housing's customer portal. If your organization is new to the portal, a representative from your organization can request access through an online form available on our website. When you request an account, you must include contact information for all users in your organization that participate in the application or post-selection due diligence process and who will need access. Allow up to two business days for your user account to be activated. You will receive an email to set up a password. After your user account and password are set up, you may begin applying for funding in the portal. If staff in your organization changes after initial account setup, Submit a change form to Minnesota Housing. It's available on our website and is also linked on the home screen when you log into the portal. Once a project is created, sponsors may request project access for individuals outside their organization. We will walk through the request process later in this tutorial. The portal is a web-based application built on the Salesforce platform. The recommended browser is Google Chrome. It is a free browser that you can download at google.com slash chrome slash downloads. To log into the portal, go to mnhousing.forest.com slash multifamily portal. Your username is typically your business email. Your password was created by you. If you're having trouble logging in or need additional assistance, contact mhfa.app at state.mn.us. We will now transition to a demonstration of the portal where we will walk through the how to apply for funding process. For this demonstration, I have already logged into the portal. To apply for funding, users will need to create a project in the portal. Think of a project as a homepage for your application. It contains checklists where you can upload ap application materials, and if applicable, is where you can access the scoring wizard to complete a self-scoring process. To find open funding rounds, click on the funding rounds tab in the navigation menu or the button on the main page. Click on the name of the funding round you want to apply to to view more details. From here, you'll be able to see the name of the funding round, the close date and time, as well as some high level information about what's available in the funding round. To create a project, click apply for funding. This will launch the Apply for Funding Wizard. In order to create a project, you'll need to provide some high-level detail about it, including name, location, as well as number of units you anticipate, total development costs and construction costs, sponsor details, developer details, and if applicable, processing agent details. Don't worry, you can always come back and edit this information at a later time. This allows us to get some preliminary info about the applications that we will receive. Now going to enter in some data. In some funding rounds, we allow for a dual application process. If you're applying for a, with a dual application, you'll need to tell us the financial structure that will be included as your primary proposal, as well as the financial structure that will be included in your secondary or dual application. If you're applying for 9% housing tax credits, that should always be listed as your primary proposal type. You 
you will need to provide the latitude and longitude for your project. You can find the coordinates on Minnesota Housing's website on our Community Profiles maps. Now I'll provide some information about the units within the project, as well as number of buildings and a few details about the populations that we are proposing to serve. Click Next in order to move through the wizard. You must provide information about the project sponsor, including an individual contact. If your project has a developer or processing agent, you will need to provide details about those contacts as well. If I were to select yes, additional questions would become available to me. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll click no. On the last page before you create a project, you'll be asked to review the information that you've provided. Again, don't worry, you can update this information later on and we'll talk about where you will do that. Also note at the bottom, we disclose some information about Minnesota Government Data Practices Act. I am ready to create my project, so I'll click the button. Great, my project was created. Now I can do a couple of things. I can add another project, so say I'm submitting two applications this round, or I can go ahead and add team members because I want them to be able to participate in the application process, or I can go to the project I just created to continue working on it. In this case, I am going to add project team members because I have a few people that I'd like to help participate in the application process. So I clicked add team member. Here I'm told a little bit about what team member access does and I'll click add team member again. Now I'll need to provide the contact information for the person I would like added. This information is then emailed to Minnesota housing staff who will add the individual you've requested to your project team. Please allow up to two business days for this process to occur. And note that if the individual you are adding, you are requesting access for does not have a portal user account, we'll need to work with them in order to get that set up. You'll be able to identify if the user should have read access or read write access. Most users get read write access. And now I'm going to hit save. I could hit save anew if I'd like to add another person right away. Here you can see I'll have one individual that I've requested get added to my project. And I can do a couple of things. Again, I could add another team member. I could add another project to this funding round. Or I can click finished and go view the project that I've created. I'm going to click finish and view my project. Now I'm brought back to my project where I could continue on by identifying project characteristics and then work within my checklist or the scoring wizard. If you or someone in your organization has already created a project, you can get back to it by going by logging into the portal and clicking projects on the main page. 
from there, you can use one of the lists in order to locate it. Uh, options include all projects as well as recently viewed. If you click the drop down arrow next to the list view name, you'll be able to see a diff additional options for you to sort your list. Note that you can also click on the, the column headers in order to sort. I'm going to locate the project I just created and click on its name in order to be brought back to its main page. Again, now that I'm here, I could continue working on my project by identifying characteristics, uploading documentation to my checklist, or working in the scoring wizard. Be sure to check out our other tutorials in order to help you understand those processes. To access user guides and other video tutorials, view Minnesota Housing Customer Portal Resources page. For system questions, contact mhfa.app at state.mn.us. For questions regarding your application, you can request technical assistance on our website. Thank you. That concludes this tutorial.